Hey y'all, we're excited to announce the latest addition to the California Backcountry Discovery Trail Network, the El Dorado BDT. Before we get into all the technical details, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And like all of our other route guides, you can get the GPX files and all of the other info at www.overlandtrailguides.com. So let's talk about the El Dorado BDT. The El Dorado BDT marks the 7th California Backcountry Discovery Trail and also forms part of the California Crest Trail. It also happens to be one of my favorite BDTs with its technical trails, exquisite views of the High Sierra, and numerous opportunities for lakeside camping. For this particular route guide, you'll note that we skipped a few sections due to time constraints as well as fire closures. Now, let's get into the technical details about the route. The length of the El Dorado BDT is about 184 miles. We recommend setting aside four to six days if you plan on hitting the entire trail. The season for this particular route is typically from late June through November. That obviously depends on snowpack. If you're going to hit the route at one of the tail ends of the season, make sure you check with the Forest Service to make sure that the route is open because there's a couple of sections that go above 9,000 feet. Let's talk about the technical rating for the route. This route features a few different moderately technical Jeep tracks. Those include Strawberry Pass, Pardo's Trail, and Long Valley Trail. If you're going to hit Pardo's Trail, you're going to need a short wheelbase 4x4 with a small lift and sliders. If you've got a truck, we definitely recommend skipping Pardo's Trail. You can do a nice out back up to Hungalelfi Ridge, take in those views of the High Sierra, but do not hit Pardo's Trail. Okay, let's talk about Sprinter 4x4s and adventure vans. If you've got a Sprinter 4x4, you can actually do most of the trail. Basically, you're just going to want to skip those Jeep tracks that we, we talked about. So skip Strawberry Pass, Pardo's, and Long Valley. There's a couple of tight sections, uh, but other than that, you should definitely be okay. And again, guys, you can get all of the information about this particular route, including GPX files and dozens of other overland routes at www.overlandtrailguides.com. Why don't we have, head over to Google Earth and check out the track there? The official start and end of the route is right outside of Kybers on Highway 50, about a half hour drive from South Lake Tahoe. The route begins by climbing up the moderately technical Strawberry Pass Jeep Trail. From there, we'll take Highway 88 over to Burnside Road and up Hawkins Peak, eclipsing 10,000 feet. We'll retrace our tracks over to the Blue Lakes Loop and Forestdale Divide, one of my favorite sections of the route. Then it's back on the highway and over to Mud Lake in the exquisite views of the High Sierra along Hungalelty Ridge. We'll descend Hungalelty Ridge until it turns into Pardo's Jeep Trail, eventually meeting up with Lower Bear River Reservoir. The route then crosses Highway 88 into the lower elevations of the El Dorado National Forest. Along the way, we'll make a couple of stops at Fire Lookouts, cross the American River, and finish things off on Long Valley Jeep Trail. So we were supposed to go to Hawkins Peak this way, but um, this is right on the boundary of the official closure for the Tamarack Fire, and they obviously closed this. We're gonna take a little hike, get Shasta some exercise, and uh, wait for the boys to show up. So I just passed, um, I think it was one of the hot shots for the Humboldt Toyabe National Forest, and I was talking to the guy. And he said we could actually drive out to Burnside Lake if we wanted. He unlocked the gate. So I'm going to talk to the boys about that. We can't go up to Hawkins Peak. Got my dog chasing squirrels here. But uh, we'll talk to them about it and see what they want to do. I think, I think we're going to Blue Lakes is what I'm gathering. <laughs> That's totally fine. So uh, even though we got the green light, Ed has spoken. Oh God, he's don't put most, it on me. He's the
ready to rock. Let's go. So we're on our way to, I believe it's Lost Lake. The gravel road is turned on to a, I, I call it a Jeep crack track. Nothing uh, too technical, but definitely rocky. Gonna have to earn our lunch here and hopefully we'll be there in the next 10 minutes. Have a nice break. What you guys are seeing is actually a small part of the uh, California Crest Trail that goes through the El Dorado National Forest. And the other thing that we're actually going to do, we're going to create a backcountry discovery trail that goes through El Dorado. You have the Tahoe backcountry discovery trail to the north. Um, we'll figure out a way to connect those two so basically you can connect them together if you want. Uh, the Tahoe backcountry discovery trail, a lot of that actually forms part of the uh, California Crest Trail too. but. These, uh, these views up here, they are, uh, they're epic. They're awesome. I All right, so we just got to Red Lake. Uh, we're back at Highway 88. We got to jump on the highway here. I don't know if it's like eight, 10 miles, something like that. We're gonna take it slow. And uh, I think we're going over, I hope I say this right, Place Peak, and probably try to find something to camp over there. So here we are at Mud Lake, uh, just weathered a thunderstorm, a little bit of rain as well, but uh, no rain now. It was blowing pretty hard. It seems to have settled down, but it also seems to have blown out a lot of the smoke. So I'm excited for tomorrow. We're going up over another pass, going up on the ridge. It should be nice. Kylie's gonna be joining us later tonight. And we got Mr. Ed joining us here. Hey man, it's a great spot, dude. 
Ben threw together a quick little route for us. There we go. And look where we're at. This is bitching. It's just how it works out sometimes, you know? Good morning from Mud Lake. So, can't remember if we got this on the video yesterday, but we got hit with a little bit of a, uh, a thunder shower. Had some wind. Blew out a lot of the smoke though. You can definitely see some on the horizon, but it's a lot more clear than yesterday. But the itinerary for today is uh, we're gonna have a head over to Pardo's Jeep Trail. And I think we have some other Jeep tracks as well. So some more, hopefully, fun, bumpiness, uh, semi-technical trail, stuff like that should be good. Hoping we can see more of the surrounding mountains because yesterday it was awesome. There was just a lot of haze and uh, we got Dean down below, but this is what we're waking up to. So here's another angle of camp. See there's a fire ring, but we're in a uh, no wood or charcoal burn situation, so no fires for us. Got some of the guys over here enjoying a warm cup of joe. Waking up to the sun coming over the forest and the, uh, the bluffs over there. Guys, let's talk about the itinerary today. We are gonna be hitting the Pardo's Jeep Trail. Should be some fantastic views of the McCollumy Wilderness on the other side. I mean, the views, you'll see, they are really, really, really awesome right now. We probably have visibility of maybe eight to 10 miles. The storm definitely blew out some of the smoke, so that's helping there. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to keep my eye on the trail just because it is so pretty. After taking in the awe-inspiring views of the High Sierra, we headed back down Hungalelti Ridge to Pardo's Trail. Pardo's Trail is a tight and twisty jeep track that is moderately technical in nature. 
If you plan to hit Pardo's trail, you'll need a high clearance, short wheelbase vehicle. Sliders and a spotter are recommended for most rigs. He cleared it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Just not hard. No, no, go straight. Mike. Nice and break, break, break. Drop off. Nice and yeah, yeah. so, yeah, See, the wheelbase, um, there's a couple of key factors turn. that yep. make things a little more. it would be interesting to see how cut. He's on a. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. You're good. You're going to have another drop. Perfect. Perfect. All right, back wheel going to drop nice and slow. You're out. God damn, that's a pig. <laughs> Yep, you're clear. Just drop down nice and slow. Yep. Uh, a little passenger. Yep. Good. All right, back wheel's going to hit that last big rock. You're good. Yep, perfect. All right, now you're going to... All right, now give me a little driver. A little driver. You're clear here. Yep. He's good on the back. There. You're good. Keep coming. You're good. There you go. Nice job. You're just going to nice gradual drop. Our group of five vehicles spent about five hours working our way through the more technical section of Pardo's trail. By the time the trail opened up a bit, it was already evening and the group was restless and ready to find a campsite. helping everybody through the things i didn't wasn't able to take much we got footage. all right guys so we are finally at camp people are eating we've been here for a couple hours now uh we just pulled some down some random spur and found this little pull out here but uh basically we're on pardo's jeep trail pretty much all day i think we did like 15 or 18 miles uh definitely a uh, moderately technical track lots of scraping sliders lots of spotting stacking rocks uh, but it was a fun day, and man, those views up there just 
just next level and this is what we're doing now. Kylie's starting the uh, propane fire pit. People are enjoying dinner and got this great forest. Good morning from Ham Spring. So this is where we ended up camping last night. Just found a nice little spur road and uh, you can check it out here. Got some nice mature, they look like noble firs, mostly what there are. Uh, there might be some Douglas fir in here, but I gotta go look. Anyways, uh, we ended up here because we spent a lot more time on the trail yesterday. I think we covered like 20 miles or 18 miles yesterday just because the Pardo Jeep Trail took so long for all of us to get through. I think for today we're gonna head down to Bear Re River Reservoir, maybe take a dip, uh, work our way north to the 50, uh, do some exploring, and um, it should be fun. There. For day three, relative to the previous days at least, we'll be working through the lower elevations of the El Dorado National Forest. We'll make our way north towards Highway 50 and the American River via a series of dirt forest service roads and some secondary tight, bumpy, and steep jeep tracks. so far from today. I think we've already covered almost the same amount of ground, if not more, what we covered yesterday in, I don't know, an hour and a half. So we've been trucking along. I uh, hit one little rocky section that you probably saw, but uh, for the most part, we've easily been averaging 20 miles an hour. This is like a secondary road to so going a little bit slower, but um, making good things today. Alright, we just broke for lunch, had a nice little lunch next to the Consumus River at Caps Crossing. Now we're on our way to, uh, I believe it's Alder Ridge Lookout. There might be a couple of Jeep trails along the way as well. And then I think we're going to look for camp. Um, no idea where we're camping yet. Ideally we'd like to camp somewhere with a decent view and shelter or next to water. But uh, that can be a bit of a challenge up here in the Sierra sometime.
so we're at Gerard Lookout, uh, hit a gate. That's okay, we'll go for a little walk. Okay, so we are walking up to, I believe it's Alder Ridge Lookout. No idea if the fire lookout is still up here. As you can see, there's a locked gate. Um, but nice to get some views. Lots of smoke, unfortunately. Just how it goes these days in the west. But uh, the views look like they'd be great on a day when there's uh, no smoke. We probably have visibility of, I don't know, 15 miles looking south. There it is. We'll see if we can go up. It's pretty cool. Look at this. Must be the old lodging quarters. And then of course, fire lookout is up there. I think we can get up it. This is probably where the old fire lookout used to stay back in the day. A nice little picnic bench here. Outhouse. And, uh, boom. Here we go. Well, this thing, these woods. It's kind of sketchy. This It has wood uh, slats up here, and they're a little old. Hello! This is pretty cool. <laughs> this is a pretty janky one too. I know. So we're almost done with our planned route. We went to Alder Ridge Lookout. Awesome. And I think we're going to go over to Ice House Reservoir check out the situation there see if there's any dispersed camping if we can't find anything we're basically going to follow the paved road go up to union valley and keep working our way up through the lakes until we uh until we find something and i'm sure we will Something Fork of the American River, China Flat. Shaz is having fun. Come on, let's get in. Let's get in. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Here she goes. She just follows me. Ow! Woo! Did you marinate this? I did. It's teriyaki. Teriyaki chicken. 